Good afternoon. It is now uh, let's see, one thirty-nine uh, on Tuesday afternoon, and I'm going to call this meeting to order. The first thing I'd like to do is be, uh, introduce the other two members of the committee. That's uh, Michelle Woodhead. I'd like to get an audio check on her. Here, Michelle. Okay. Senator Thomas. That's you. Great. We're still looking for uh, Commissioner Woodhead. Do you have Commissioner Woodhead muted by any chance? Yes. Can you unmute her so she can speak? While we're waiting for that to happen, I apologize for the meeting for last week. COVID came to my house on Tuesday evening uh, with about 35, 35 million viruses. I think I can only fight off 25 million of them. And fortunately, I was vaccinated and recovered quickly, and I'm pleased to be here and healthy. Uh, so with that, we'll go on with the uh, statement of announcements. And uh, this uh, Manus would give it, do that for us, please. A meeting notice announcing the date, time, and place of the notice. 14th policy committee meeting was distributed November 8th to appropriate media and other groups or individuals who have requested notification. The announcement and agenda were posted at the Department of Disabilities and Special Needs Central Administrative Office and on the website. The public has been notified that accommodations such as interpreters, mobility assistance, or other assistance will be provided to individuals with disabilities and special needs if requested in advance. Thank you. Turn with me in prayer, please. Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us on a daily basis. Father, as we conduct the business of DDSN, allow us to always look uh, to other people's needs ahead of ours. The Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, the uh, agenda is very small today. We're going to adopt the agenda first. The agenda has been submitted uh, out to every, everyone prior to the meeting. So if there's any uh, comments or concerns, let them be said. I hear none, so I'm taking that to be a unanimous consent for adoption of the agenda. The second thing we're looking at is the approval of the summary notice notes for the last meeting. And it's, I don't know how important this is to y'all, but I did not realize that these are summary notes. This is not a, uh, a minutes of a meeting, so, but this is just for the record. I don't know exactly the difference, but it's, it's, it's a, there's an informal difference, there's a formal difference between the two, but uh, these, the summary notes were also uh, included in the meeting packet for the commissioners, so hopefully they have reviewed them. If there's any changes, may I hear so now, please? Hearing none, the uh, summary notes have been adopted, and we're now going to our new business. Uh, the new business is pretty, pretty uh, short today. This is a, a review of what was discussed on September the 12th. There was some uh, discussion about some of the proposals we had during that meeting and the, the commissioners were um, asked to submit their, their concerns in writing and these were uh, used to adjust the uh, policy. So I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Manos to present the policy as, as amended. Sure, so really what we did was we took um, everyone's comments from the initial policy change and we adjusted the policy to try to um, come as close as we could, you know, to addressing each one of the comments. So um, the changes really continue to have the ability for the chairman in conjunction with the staff um, to determine the proper review process so that maybe some policies that don't have a ton of changes can go directly from directly to the commission and don't have to wait for a policy committee meeting. Um, so that was kind of, you know, if you remember the September 12th meeting, that was our, um, our intent all along, but we tried to shore up some of the language so it didn't look like the chairman was just randomly making decisions by himself. We also added some uh, some 
examples of items that would go directly to the commission, like edits necessary to align with Medicaid home and community based waiver processes, that kind of thing. So that's really it, unless you guys have questions about it. I would like to speak to it for just a second, please. Um, this is a, a subcommittee in that we review and refer. So there's nothing that we do that becomes a policy until it's passed through the commission. And right. the checks and balances we added to this policy for that check and balance is that any time there's two commissioners that have questions about any policy, they can be uh, referred back to the policy committee for a formal review. Right. So that is the way I understand it. The other two commissioners on board, uh, uh, Commissioner Woodhead and Commissioner Thomas, do you have any comments or concerns? Commissioner Woodhead. I think she's... Uh... Not even to speak. <laughs> well, we may not ever. She looks like she's still muted. Access to the mic. She may need to unmute herself. Woodhead, can you try unmuting yourself again to see if it works now? I don't want to speak for Commissioner Woodhead, but I do have. Uh, I've had some conversation with her. Ah, oh, look, she's off mute. All right. Okay. I have no questions or concerns. All right, thank you very much. Okay, yeah. with that uh, uh, understanding, if I hear no objections, then we will uh, pass this policy unanimously and move on to policy of the agenda item number two. Attachment B needs to go through. Okay, so the policy is there along with attachment D, okay. which is an attachment to the policy. And it basically outlines procedures. Um, so, I mean, again, if there's any, it's all kind of the same vein of the, the same changes were reflected in attachment D that were in the policy. Some of the initial changes remained like adding a 15 business day public review period. We kind of updated that since we're going to send policies out prior to bringing it to the policy committee and then we're going to you know and then once it goes to the policy committee and they pass it it would go to the commission or if it went directly from staff to the commission it would have already been out for public comment for 15 days so those are kind of the, the things that are included there now once again uh, the policy is being changed mostly to streamline the process right. and to take away our official deadlines for the staff so that we Hopefully, it can be more efficient. Uh, any questions about this uh, attachment? Right. So, I think I understand what you're saying. Um, right now, we, well, historically, we have not done that. We've provided the strike through version to the committee. And when it goes to the full commission, it is the new policy in the form of the new policy because it's signed, right? So, my suggestion would be that if we have a policy, we might as well just do all of them. I was going to say if we have one that goes straight, we should do it. But I think it's probably good practice for us to include the version with the strike through as well as the version that is, you know, being proposed in its final version so that the commission has both of them. Is that acceptable? Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Absolutely. We that's how we work. That's how we do it anyway. We just have historically only provided the strike through version to the committee. And I think the change in practice will be we will provide it to the committee as well as to the full commission along with the finalized version for them to sign. Sure. Uh, certainly, I'm in agreement with that. So, if uh, Commissioner Woodhead is okay, we'll uh, make that change. It's not really a change okay. to the procedures because they weren't they weren't there to begin with. All right. But we'll change it in practice. We'll make sure it ends up in these notes so that it's in writing somewhere. But it never was in the procedures or the policy, so I wouldn't suggest adding it. Okay. So it sounds like everything's okay, and uh, with that. Uh, 
Can't call it a change. You said it wasn't a change. So <laughs> with that suggestion, uh, we will uh, consider that finalized then. And we'll move on to the second item, which is 100-01-DD. Right. So this was a policy that we just updated based on the changes that were made to 807 and the corresponding attachment. This is around electronic communications, and there was a reference in there to the time frame for posting, which was 10 business days, and we moved it to 15. So it's just that that is the only change we made to 101, just so that it would be consistent with um, the policy around the committees. Once again, that sounds very simple to me. I have no suggestions to, to do anything differently than that. The other commissioners okay with that? Yes, I am, Michelle. So if I hear no objections, then that has been passed unanimously. And believe it or not, that is the agenda for today. Uh, we'll be adjourning, but we do not have a date firm set for the next meeting. It will depend upon holidays and workload. So you will be notified, of course, uh, as appropriate. So I'd like a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you for your time.